this is obviously it's like what I just talked about. Uh, if you need them, I can send them to you. But I've been using them all these years. But can you see here? I was explaining. Remember, I said you must know the debit and the credit on the bank statement. This is what uh, I was trying to say. I said the debit decreases the. You know, this is the theory that I wanted you to 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 to, to see. But like we 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 have seen, we have gone through this, and I don't think that will be very difficult. Okay. And then you can see here, I'm just trying to uh, show you that at the end of the day, we are coming. Remember, I was talking about comparing our business. Um, when we uh, talk about the cash book, here is the business side. Remember, it's when I was doing uh, this is the business side. Let me just change the color quickly. Um, this is the business side. And this is the bank side. Remember when I was explaining um, initially there, and then I was I just said, okay, this is business, and this is the bank side. And the bank I was referring to, for example, F and B or um, uh, outside doesn't matter. I can call them financial institutions. Okay. Come again. Yes, GL is general ledger, yes. Okay. It's a T account, eh? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, and then when you talk about the cash books, we're referring to, remember those we talked about now, CBR and CBP. So those are the cash books. So you will see, normally they ask you to transfer to the CBR and CBP, and thereafter you need to go and transfer to the bank account. Can you see now? Now, remember we talked about the adjusting and the timing. Just to check if you still remember, what are the differences between adjusting and timing difference, if you remember what I said? I can't hear you. Just try to speak closer to the speaker. I was saying, so uh, adjusting would be you got money on your side, but it hasn't appeared on the bank side. No, it's the other side, the other way around. Yes, adjusting meaning on the bank statement, not yet. And timing, obviously. Uh, it would be that it appeared in our books, but it doesn't appear on the bank. That's true. So what's on uh, in our books, but not yet on the bank statement, that would be uh, timing. But I don't know about it. And then, but yeah. So now we, we spoke about the errors. Can you see? So this just, you know, just helping when you go through the slides. So this can help you a lot. Okay. So, but this is what we just spoke about. Um, just can you see these are the examples of uh, um, the adjusting differences? Remember, we said they normally appear on the bank statement, but not yet uh, in our books. So, the only challenge here you must know where to record. Can you see? Okay, let me ask you just to challenge you. So, Remember here, the adjusting differences can either go to the CBR or CBP. That's the thing. Because they are appearing on the bank statement. Okay. So let's decide. Out of all these things, where do you think we are going to record the bank charges? Which book? Between CBR and CBP. CBP, because we have to pay for them. Yes, CBP. It's the same as CPJ. And what about the interest on current account? Current account is like a bank account. Uh, we receive that, so it's CBP. 
CBR. CBR, perfect. What about the interest on overdraft? That will be an expense, so we have to pay for that CBP. This was also busy CBP, thank you. And what about the debit orders? Come again? I think it would be CBP for David Orders. Okay, CBP. What about direct deposits? Let's say when the customer gives you money directly in the bank. CBR. CBR, thank you very much. So, do you understand what it is on a check? Yes. So where do we record them? Test to be CBP. Okay, because this one is just like the case that you thought you received, but now, as you said, the uh, the customer doesn't have enough cash. Okay. Also, you'd have to pay it back to the bank or remove it. No, remember, if the customer gives you, um a check before we go to the bank and claim the cash we record in our books and say the customer paid us ne? but when we arrive at the bank we realize that the customer does not have cash at the bank so what we need to do we must go and fix that record that we made already so instead of Cancelling it like directly on the CBR, we go to the CBP and record it because I know that whatever I record on the CBP is going to be rectifying the CBR. So there's no real cash, it's just that I'm cancelling the records. That, 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 do, you, uh, do you understand what I'm talking about? Yes, I understand. So I'd have to say CBP because it's me cancelling the amount that I said I received, but I didn't receive it. I can't hear you. I think it's because you're on the speaker, but you can just raise your voice a bit. Oh, so I was saying, I understand what you're saying because it's CBP because you would have to cancel out the amount that you said you received, but you didn't receive it. So you're canceling it out by making it seem like you paid it out. Yes, you are correct. You are correct. You are correct. Yes, sorry. Yeah, so this is what we need to understand uh, so far, okay? So, but we'll see by the time when we take a question, it will make sense. Can I move on? Yes, sir. Uh, the other one that I, I forgot to put here, né? so I think I put it on the wrong slide, which is next. So there's another one called, Stale check, ne? So, yeah, stale check. And let me just write it down for you. A stale check, ne? Is this, uh, for example, you know, sometimes you you pay people using checks. And then they normally give you six months to claim the money. You understand that? So if, let's say, you keep the check with you for more than six months, it means when you go and claim the money from the bank, they won't give it to you because they will say the bank, uh, the check is what is stale. Meaning you need to go back to the person who gave you the check so that can write you another check. Are we together? Yes. So it means, let's say, uh, I, I pay you using a check in my books. I pay you, let's say, I pay you 5000 using a check. It means, remember, if I issue a check, it's like cash. I record in my books and say I paid someone this amount of money, which is 5000 So this amount will be reflected in my CBP. Can you see now? If I pay you with a check, 
now i will record in my cbp because i paid you okay. but when it becomes stay it means i need to cancel that check and give you another one but how can i cancel the check it means i must go how can i like from our past experience how can i cancel a payment where do i record to cancel a payment Yes, I'm going to record under the K, you are correct. I'm going to go and record under the CBR. So if you see, stay check will always be in the CBR because I'm trying to cancel the check that I have issued. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. It's just the, the, the it's like opposite of the dishonored check. Can you see the dishonored check? It's the one that I thought I received. And then the stale check is the one that I thought I paid. Can you see now? Yes, I can see. Yes. So you must know that the stale check, and normally when they give you the, the this type of a, a information in the exam or test, they don't normally say stale check. They can just give you a check, and they give you a date next to the check. So meaning, if they give you the date, you must count and say, okay, this check has been issued on this day, and I'm on this month. You must count from the date of issue for that check until this month that you are dealing with. So if you find yourself having six months or more, it means the check is stay with check. Are we together? Yeah, so you must count. Normally they don't tell you. They, what, what I normally tell my students is the fact that the minute you see a date next to the check, please count. Because you can find that maybe there is a stale check. Yes, yeah, sometimes when you count, you only found that the check has been issued three months ago, four months ago, five months ago. It's okay, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, it's going to be outstanding check. But the minute you find it being six months old, just know that the check is stale and that check must be recorded under the CBR. Remember that. Are we good? Yes, sir. No problem, yes. Um, the next, you will see on my next slide here, I do have, remember I said I put this check, stale check on the wrong slide this one remember i said it was supposed to go with uh, like i said it was supposed to go with the other uh, adjusting so here i'm talking about the timing differences remember i said the timing differences are all about uh, the outstanding checks and the outstanding people in other words these items are appearing in our books but not yet on the bank statement that is the mention something not yet In the bank statement, this is what it said. But not yet on the bank statement. Okay, so we call them outstanding deposit and we call them outstanding checks. But you'll see by the time uh, when we go and, and, and record, you'll see how do we filter all of this information. Okay, any question about this one? So again, the next slide you'll see, this is what I was, talking. remember it was, I didn't wanna show you this slide before our, I, I showed you uh, how to deal with errors. Here is all about the errors. Remember you talked about the errors. So remember I told you about overstating. So I'm not gonna dwell much on this. The way I explain them to you, I summarize them uh, nicely for you. But if you need to learn them more, so can you see I said the bank understated check on the bank states. These are the kinds of errors that you can find. So if you find them, you must know where to record. Okay, these are the kind of errors. Sometimes you overstate, sometimes you understate. Sometimes as a business, we make mistakes, we overstate. Sometimes the bank overstate. Can you see now? So this is what we have explained before. So it's what I summarized when we were explaining uh, before. Are you okay with this one so far? No problem. Uh, and again, here I just tried, you know, this is what we've spoken about. Uh, 
we spoken about um, these things? Can you say I just gave you some examples of where to record? We just talked about these things. Can you say like especially these ones? Uh, can you see about the errors? I said the amount understated in the CBR, you record in the CBR, amount and overstated in the CBP, you must record in the CBR. Can you see now? Uh, here's what I explained to you when I started here. So this is just a, you know, a guidance if someone forgets. Can you see what we have spoken about? Uh, where to record the stop orders, the debit orders, you know, things, dishonored checks, things like that. Uh, did I put the still check here? I didn't put the still check, but you remember the still check? Let me just put it for, the, for, for just for the sake because it seems as if this still check is always missing. So even the still check, you can put it here. And we said the still check will go to which book? Remember we spoke about this? And forget, can you see now? And then I said this will go to our cash books. And again, remember there are things which appear in our cash book, but not on the bank statement. We record them in what you call the bank reconciliation statement. There's something called bank reconciliation statements where we're gonna put the outstanding deposits and outstanding checks and the errors which have been made by the bank. Can you see specifically by the bank? These errors must be made by the bank before they can come to the reconciliation statement. So before you can go to the reconciliation statement, you need to make sure that the bank make the error. Because if the error was not made by the bank, we will have to record in the cash books. Because it means the errors were made by us as a business. We must come and record them in the books. But if the error was made by the bank, we record under the bank reconciliation. But you'll see how are we going to record by the time when we take a practical exercise. Okay. Yes, sir. No problem. Um, this is the format that you'll see we normally use uh, for the bank recon. Uh, I'm not sure if they still give you the answer sheet or answer books, but I think they do. Can you see for the sub, uh, the cash book receipts, uh, they normally give you something like this. Can you see where you're going to put details here? For example, uh, we normally start with the balance. Let's say, for example, for the balance here, uh, let's say they give you the total, because sometimes they give you the total for this. Uh, uh, the total, let's say, for the total given to you which comes from the CBR, let's say it's 5,000, it's 6,000. You wanna put 6,000, let's say for example, you have to um, record something like rent income. Let's give you an example. Let's say uh, direct deposit. Let's say direct deposit, which was made by Sylvester, for example. And then let's say Sylvester paid you a direct deposit of 500. You're gonna put it there. Now they're gonna give you a format like this if they give you the format. But if they don't give you the format, you don't know how does the format look like. Okay. This is the cash book receipts. Even the one for the cash book payment is similar. It's just that in the cash book payments, you put the information that it's all about cash outflows. Can you see now? It's the format is still the same. Again, the total, if they give you the total, you will start with the total here. But you will see uh, it needs an exercise so that you can understand what I'm talking about. Let's say the total here for the payment given to you was 700, it's gonna be 700. And then thereafter, let's say for example, you paid for bank charges, just give you an example. Uh, let's say the bank charges were eight rands, and then you just say eight rands, and et cetera, et cetera. So again, you will see this is how I'm gonna use the information. So normally they will ask you to open the cash book payments and the cash book receipts, and thereafter, they will ask you to transfer to the bank account. Can you see now? I think you remember the bank account looks like this. If they ask you to transfer to the bank account, a bank account like a GL, remember the one that I just showed you. So it just got a debit and a credit. The same way we have dealt with the bank account when we did our account in 1A. It's the same way. Can you see now? So a bank account will be like this account and then this side will be paid so uh, normally after if they ask you for the after this you must transfer remember when you transfer in the bank account here you're going to transfer the total for the cbr on the debit side and 
on the credit side, you, you put the total for the CBP. But as I said, an example will give us an idea of how to deal with this, okay? So we need to make sure that we understand how to do this. So from the two books, which is the cash book payments and the cash book receipts, we transfer to the bank account. And after transferring to the bank account, is then that we can open what we call the bank reconciliation statement, okay? Uh, we can open a bank reconciliation statement and you can see this is the format of the bank reconciliation statement as you can see here and then again you will see there are things that we need to remember what to do on here but yeah that's how the bank reconciliation statement looks like so the formats look the same it's just that they've got a different uh, function all of them so you must know when to deal with the cash books when to deal with the bank account and when to deal with the bank reconciliation. So they are all interrelated because the information that is transferred from the bank, from the cash books to the bank, will affect the bank reconciliation statement. Because in the bank reconciliation statement, you will need the bank account. And for you to compile bank account, you need to transfer from the cash book receipts and the cash book payments. So those things are very much important. So this is the theory that we just learned. It's very much important. This is just the end of that lesson number one. Uh, it's important to learn the theory before you can go to the practical. Okay. Do you have a question so far? No, that's okay. Okay, so far. So yeah, so 